good morning students in this uh, video session we are to talk about the next uh, animal kingdom phyla so that is the platy helminthes so previous class we discussed about the cylindrata chinophora in this session we have to talk about the platy helminthes so right this platy helminthes organisms so who was called the term of uh, platy helminthes so this is the fourth phyla in the major Phylas. So this platy helminthes word it is a given by the Gegenberg scientist. What is the scientist name? Beta Gegenberg. So Gegenberg scientist he was coined the term of platy helminthes. Means the platy helminthes word it is proposed by which scientist? Gegenberg scientist. So this uh, platy helminthes it is taken from the Greek word. So that is mean that is the uh, platy. Platy means uh, flat. Platy means uh, flat. Helminthes means uh, worms. Helminthes. What is the meaning of helminthes? Helminthes means uh, worms. Right? Flat worms. So simply, platy helminthes means flat worms. Flat worms. So these flat worms. Why these organisms are known as a flat worms? So all the members of platy helminthes. So those body is dorsally ventrally compressed so actually so this is known as a ventral side and this is known as a dorsal side so that organisms body is a dorsally and ventrally compressing so due to that reason the body look like the flight like appearance so that's why it is known as a flat worms that's why it is called as a flat worms flat worms so, okay this word is uh, proposed by the scientist to gegenberg scientist this scientist gegenberg okay this is the uh, introduction about the platy helminthes so let us we have to look on the general characters of what is the general characters what is the general characters of the platy helminthes the so, first of all we have to talk about the all platy helminthes organisms are the triploblastic organisms so they are the triploblastic organisms what is the mean by the triploblastic triploblastic animals body which is a deriving from the three kinds of germinal layers okay the body it is a formed by three germinal layers what is the three germinal layers three germinal layers so that is the ectoderm so this is known as a ectoderm and this one is a mesoderm mesoderm and this one is known as a endoderm endoderm so these are the triploblastic organisms okay platy helminthes organisms are the triploblastic organisms body is a formed by the three germinal layers outer layer is known as ectoderm and middle is known as mesoderm and inner one is called as endoderm so in between the endoderm and the ectoderm so this area it is a completely filling by the special kind of tissue so that is known as a parenchyme parenchyme right so this is the tissue which is occupying the middle layer so that layer that layer is known as a mesoderm so mesoderm is completely filling by the parenchyme tissue which tissue parenchyme tissue so this tissue is helps in the transportation of digested particles to the body parts right so that is the parenchyme so due to that reason it is known as a triploblastic what is the meaning of the triplo triplo means three three germinal layers plastic means layers triploblastic organisms they are the triploblastic organisms and uh, they are the bilateral symmetrical organisms so they are the bilateral symmetrical organisms so which kind of symmetry is uh, exhibited so members of the platy helminthes it is exhibited which kind of symmetry bilateral symmetrical organisms so means they are organisms that organisms are exhibiting the bilateral symmetry what is the meaning of the bilateral symmetry for example this is the liver fluke it is a, a flat worm so one flat worm so this is the anterior portion and this is the posterior portion 
so whenever we have to cut the organism from anterior axis to the posterior axis so whenever we have to getting the two equal parts whenever we getting the two equal parts so that kind of symmetry is known as a bilateral symmetry simply yahan pe kya kar rahe beta anterior se posterior ko hum kya kar rahe organisms ko cut kar rahe median axis se so now we are getting the two equal parts so that kind of symmetry is known as a bilateral symmetry so this platinum with this organisms are exhibiting the which symmetry bilateral symmetry okay next to, so these are the multicellular these are the multicellular organisms multicellular organisms and uh, which kind of organization is visible organ system organ system level of organism organ system level of organization organ system level of organization it is exhibited by the platyhelminthes it is exhibited by the platyhelminthes right so organ system level of organization is a first time it is a visible in the which organisms in the platyhelminthes the first time multi cells are present in the porifera the first time tissues are evolving in the cylindrata the first time organ and organ systems what is visible in the which phylum the plantae helminthes phylum so this is a very very important for the neat point of view right the first time organ system which is appeared in the which organisms in the plantae helminthes organisms so this is a very very important for the neat point of view right so this is the organ system level of organization so after that so these plantae or plantae helminthes organisms some organisms are some organisms are free living some organisms are the free living and uh, other organisms are the parasites parasites okay okay some organisms are the they are the free living organisms and uh, few organisms are the parasitic organism so free living organisms means they do not causing the diseases they do not causing the infections so which organisms or which uh, organisms or which parasites are causing the diseases so that organisms are called as a pathogen so some are the pathogenic parasites so let us we have to look on the parasites so what is the examples of the parasitic parasitic species in the plantae helminthes the first of all flat worm flat worm so this flat worm it is a commonly causing a disease so that is a liver rat what is the disease name beta liver rat disease so this flat worm it is also known as a fasciola it is known as a which, which organism fasciola organism and after that uh, cystosoma 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 hematobium cystosoma hematobium hematobium so this is the second example it is commonly known as a blood fluke it is commonly known as a blood fluke so which organism is commonly known as a blood fluke cystosoma hematobium cystosoma hematobium it is commonly known as a blood fluke and uh, flat worms it is commonly known as flat worm it is commonly known as a liver fluke it is commonly known as a liver fluke this liver fluke organism it is causing a disease so that disease is known as a liver rat disease okay so this uh, uh, diseases this is name is a liver rat okay what is the pathogen name liver fluke scientific name is a fasciola hepatica and other parasites are the cystosoma hematobium so this cystosoma hematobium so this organism it is living in the urinary bladder it is living in the urinary bladder of human beings so this organism is living in the urinary bladder of human beings so that's why uh, it is known as a blood fluke why it is known as a blood fluke because it is uh, uh, sucking the blood uh, by the rupturing of the blood rupturing of the urinary bladder capillaries so here this is the urinary bladder this is known as a urinary bladder okay so this urinary bladder it is having a wall so that walls are containing a capillaries so this capillaries are ruptured by the this pathogen so due to the rupturing of capillaries what happened beta 
bleeding is out bleeding is out so that blood it is sucking by the this organism due to that reason it is known as a blood flu what is the scientific name cystoma hematobium okay so this is the parasites another parasite is there that is the tinea solium tinea solium so this tinea solium it is commonly known as a tapeworm it is commonly known as a tapeworm or forkworm tapeworm or forkworm so the body is completely ribbon shaped so that's why it is called as a tapeworm so this is the three species so that is categorized into the parasitic organisms and the, some are the free living organism what is the examples of the free living the best example is a planaria what is the organism named beta planaria so this planaria organism it is a free living organism and this planaria it is also known as a dugesia dugesia so this is the diagrammatical representation of dugesia dugesia so this dugesia it is consisting of one pair of eye and a rhabdom is present rhabdom is present so the body is covered by the cilia body is covered by the cilia right so this is the organism this is called as a planaria which is also known as a dugesia so this organism it is having a high capability of regeneration power it is containing a high capability of regeneration it is containing a high capability of regeneration power what is the meaning of regeneration damaged parts lost parts it is reformed by specialized process so that process is known as a regeneration because that organisms are containing the specialized cells that is known as a totipotency cells so that totipotency cells it is having ability to uh, producing the or it is having uh, ability to producing or forming the new structures the new organs okay so that is known as a regeneration high degree of regeneration it is a visible it is a visible into the which organisms in the platy helminthes organism specially planaria or dugesia it is containing a high regeneration power okay so this is about the some general characteristics of the platy helminthes so so these general characters beta what is the platy helminthes the platy helminthes is a phylum it is commonly known as a flat worm why it is known as a flat worm because body it is a dorsally and ventrally compressing so due to the compressing of that sides what happened beta the organism look like the flat like appearance due to that reason it is known as a flat worm who was coined the term of flat worm gegenberg sandis gegenberg sandis platy means flat helminthes means worm straight like organisms what is the general characters they are the triploblastic organisms why it is called as a triploblastic beta because the body is a formed by body is a formed by how many germinal layers the body is a formed by the three kinds of the germinal layers outer layer is called as ectoderm middle is called as a mesoderm and, and inner one is called as endoderm so due to that reason it is called as a triploblastic organism and between the body wall and the organs between the body wall and the organs so it is composed by a tissue it is completely filling by a tissue that tissue is called as a parenchyma so this parenchyma it is a help in the distribution of digested materials distribution of digested particles to the uh, various organs right so that is the function of the parenchyma and due to the present of that parenchyma they do not have in the body cavity the body cavity is completely absent body cavity is completely absent in the which organisms platy helminthes so now i am writing here beta so this platy helminthes organisms they do not contain the body cavity the body cavity is completely absent body cavity is absent so that is known as a eacylomate it is known as a eacylomate what is the meaning of the eacylomate eacylomate means a means absence a means absence so absence of coelom absence of coelom is known as eacylomate means the body cavity is completely absent so what is the meaning of the body cavity beta kya definition hota hai body cavity ka the space is occurs between the body wall and elementary canal the space is occurs between the body wall so for example so this is the elementary canal this is the elementary canal right this is the elementary canal elementary canal canal right so this is the body wall this is the body wall right 
this is the body wall the space is occurs between the body wall and elementary canal so this space is now as a body cavity so the body cavity is completely absent in the which phylum in the platyhelminthes because that space it is occupied by the parenchyma tissue okay so due to that reason they do not possessing of the tissue they do not possessing the body cavity that's why it is known as a acromate right so this is the body cavity beta so this is the organisms so after that we are discussing a few another general characters of this platyhelminthes organisms right so this is the very very important for the competitive examination so the digestive system is a incompletely developed digestive system so which system beta digestive system digestive system is a incomplete incomplete digestive system is a incomplete okay because mouth is present the mouth is present but anus is absent anus is absent so due to that reason it is called as a incomplete gut is present incomplete gut is present sometimes it is known as a blind sac means it is having a single opening so that single opening it is taking the food materials and it is removing the undigested material so that is the ingestion it is helping the which purpose beta ingestion and adjacent ingestion and adjacent what is the meaning of the ingestion taking of food materials that is called as ingestion ingestion means removing of undigested materials that is known as a ingestion process so that ingestion and ingestion it is carried by the mouth so due to that reason it is known as a blind sac it is known as a blind sac so after the digestive system so next one is a respiration so respiratory system respiratory system or respiration it is carried by the help of body wall body wall right the respiration is done by the help of specialized structure so that is the body wall by a which process by a diffusion process by the which process beta diffusion process okay the respiration means the taking of oxygen and the removing of carbon dioxide that process is the respiration so that respiration is carried by the particular structure so that structure is a body wall by a which process the diffusion process and what about the circulation circulatory system circulatory system is also carried by the a circulatory system is carried by the diffusion process diffusion process diffusion process through the help of through the help of this parenchyma tissue distribution and next to what is the excretion so the excretion is perforated by specialized cells so that cells are known as a flame cells so this is the very very important for the uh, any competitive examination so most of the times so from this platinum in this uh, so this question will be asking in the asked in the previous uh, aipmk examination what is the flame cells the flame cells are the specialized cells which is present in the platinum in this organisms through the help of this flame cells they can uh, excrete the waste materials which kind of waste materials ammonia right so right so this flame cells also known as a protonephridia it is known as a protonephridia first time it is a present first time it is a developed in the uh, platyhelminthes that's why it is called as a proto proto means first and nephridia means kidney okay nephridia means kidney is excretory organs are called as nephridia the first time it is visible into the platyhelminthes organism so that's why it is called as a proto nephridia and it is also known as a flame cells so why it is known as a flame cells beta because because you have to see here i am making a diagrammatical representation of i am making a diagrammatical representation of uh, this uh, flame cells right so this is about the flame cell right so this is the cilia this is the cilia so you have to see here this is the cilia this is the this is the blepharoblast blepharo blepharoblast blepharoblast okay right this is the cilia okay this is the nucleus this is the nucleus this is the pseudopodia 
this is the pseudopodia right so this is the base of the base of the flame cell why it is known as a flame cell because this flame cells inner side of this flame cells it is containing a bunch of cilia so due to the unbeating movement of these cilia due to the unbeating movement of these cilia it look like the flame like appearance it look like the flame like appearance due to that reason it is known as a flame cells it is known as a flame cells why it is known as a flame cells because the unbeating movement of cilia it is look like the flame like appearance due to that reason it is known as a flame cells okay it is arises from the cell so that is known as a blepharoblast cells right so this is the very very important for the competitive examination right so this is the excretion is a perforated by the excretion is a perforated by the specialized structure that is the flame cell it is also known as a proto nephridias right so this is about the excretion and next one is a nervous system so nervous system it is a it is consisting the brain it is consisting the brain this is the brain and behind the brain it is contain the longitudinal nerve cord it is called as a longitudinal nerve cords longitudinal nerve cord so how many nerve cords are there there are two longitudinal nerve cords are present and these longitudinal nerve cords are joining by the fissures so it look like the ladder like appearance it look like the ladder like appearance so due to that reason so this is called as a ladder like nervous system ladder like nervous system is a visible into the plant element is so this is a very very important for the neat examination so right the ladder like nervous system it is a characteristic feature of the which phylum so they asking uh, they gave the four options cylindrate organisms plant element is a chinodermata and nematode element is and plant element is so what is the right answer the right answer is a plant element is the all the members of the plant element is those are consisting the developed well developed nervous system and that nervous system is a consist of brain and uh, one pair of longitudinal nerve cords so that longitudinal nerve cords look like the uh, ladder like appearance ladder like appearance so this is the very very important beta flame cell important ladder like nervous system important and what about the reproduction so reproduction reproduction is a two types so reproduction so reproduction is a carried by two methods reproduction is carried by two methods one is a asexual reproduction and second one is a sexual reproduction the reproduction is carried by the two methods sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction asexual reproduction it is carried by the which process beta fusion fusion process okay or budding process and the sexual reproduction it is carried by the mating of male gamete and female gamete so what is the fertilization type the fertilization is internal beta fertilization fertilization is a internal type internal fertilization is present what is the meaning of internal fertilization fertilization internal fertilization means whenever the fertilization is a takes place inside the body so that kind of fertilization is known as a internal fertilization so example human beings are exhibiting the internal fertilization and uh, external fertilization means the fertilization is a uh, takes place outside of the body so that kind of fertilization is known as a external fertilization it is exhibited by the uh, aquatic organisms mostly aquatic organisms so example the amphibians uh, and uh, uh, fishes so they exhibiting the external fertilization external fertilization means inside the water male organism producing the male gametes and the female organism producing the female gametes so that is known as a ova ova and sperm mating together out Outside of the body, inside the water, so that kind of fertilization is known as a external fertilization. So, but in the in case of this plant element, this internal fertilization is a visible. Internal fertilization is a visible, right? So after the fertilization, what happens, beta? That organisms are producing a zygote, and from the zygote, they producing the larval forms, larval forms, larval forms, right? This is a very very important for the competitive examination. larva so how many kinds of larvas are producing so this is the very very important beta very very important for the neat point of view so there are so many larvas are producing for example beta as we know in this class beta um, flukes liver fluke liver fluke organism that is a fasciola fasciola hepatica so this fasciola hepatic organism it is producing the fine larvas 
five larvas. How to remember that five larvas? How to remember that five larvas? Very very important, beta. For that, I am making a simple mnemonic to how to remember these five larval forms by sequence. So that is a M S R C M. So this is the uh, beta. This is the mnemonic beta. This is the mnemonic how to remember the larval form of the Fasciola Fasciola hepatica. So there are the five larval forms which is producing by the single species that is known as a polyembryony. Polyembryony. Embryony. What is the meaning of polyembryony? Poly means many. Poly means many larvas form. So poly means many larvas. Embryony means uh, embryony means larvas. So one organism, actually one organism is producing the one larval form. But here, in case of the fasciola, it is having ability to produce in the five larval form. So right. So that's why it is called as a polyembryony. This is also very very important for the neat examination purpose, right? Polyembryony, five larval forms for the. Uh, for the remembering of this uh, five larval form, so I am making a simple mnemonic, tick, mnemonic beta. So what is that? M S R. So simple, say Madhusudan, Madhusudan Rao. Simple. M means Madhu. S means Sudan. R means Rao. Madhusudan Rao. C M Chief Minister. C M means Chief Minister. So यहाँ से आप कैसे याद कर पाए बेटा? M stands for Madhu. M stands for Mira Siri. Mirasidium. S stands for sporosis, sporosis, and R stands for radia, radia, and C stands for cercaria, cercaria, cercaria. M stands for meta cercaria, meta cercaria. Right. So this is the mnemonic beta. M S R C M. M S R C M. M stands for mirasidium. S stands for sporosis. R stands for radia. C stands for cercaria. M stands for meta cercaria. So this is the M S R C M. Madhusudan Rao, Chief Minister C M. Right. So this is the trick mnemonic to remembering the five larval forms by sequence in a sequential order, right? So this is the polyembryony. That polyembryony it is exhibited by which organism? Beta Fasciola hepatica. It is belonging to the platyhelminthes, right? This is the very very important beta. Right, so this is the reproduction, and high regeneration is exhibited by platyhelminthes organism. Platyhelminthes organism. So some sensory structure are also visible into the platyhelminthes organism. So thank you very much for watching this video, beta. What is the examples of the platyhelminthes? So here I am writing beta examples. Our oh, examples are most important for the examination. So what is the examples of the platyhelminthes? The examples are the Planaria, planaria. So this is the planaria. It is also known as a dugesia, dugesia. Okay, right? And after that, next one is a liver. Or uh, next one is a fasciola, fasciola. It is commonly known as a liver fluke. And cystosoma, cystosoma, hematobium. Hematobium. It is commonly known as a blood flu. It is commonly known as a blood flu, right? And after that, the tinea solium. Tinea solium. Tinea solium. It is known as a. It is known as a. Tapeworm. Tapeworm. This is the common name, right? Tinea solium. And after that, tinea sarginata. Tinea sarginata, right? This is known as a beef worm. Tinea sarginata is called as a beef worm, right? This is about the examples of platyhelminthes organisms: Planaria, Fasciola, Cystrosoma, Hematobium, the Tinea solium, Tinea sarginata, right? So this is the very very important for the competitive examination purpose, right? This Cystrosoma hematobium, so it is living in the urinary bladder of human beings. And it is uh, sucking the blood 
of urinary bladder so that's why it is called as a blood flow okay so this uh, species it is causing a uh, disease so that is called as a bilharziasis very very important bilharziasis very very, very important so that question is given in the uh, aipmt examination beta previous aipmt examination bilharziasis it is caused by cystic gemmatic bacteria right so this is the very very important and this organism it is producing a larva that is known as a cysticercus larva cysticercus larva it is a producing by which organism cystosoma fasciola is producing the how many larvas there are five larvas msrcm msrcm merasidium sporocyst radia cercaria beta cercaria so this is the phylarval form which is produced by the fasciola hepatica and here the planary organism it is also having ability to producing a larval form so that larval form is called as a muller's larva muller's larva very very important what is the larval name muller's larva right so these larvae 